Kent Nat, what the heck is that? These sparklers are the hip new thing these days. We're gonna talk all about that in this video. Hello, hello, hello! <laughs> Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Welcome back to the show, and today we're talking about fun and funky sparkling wines today, or pet nats, also known as Petalent Naturel. When it comes to sparkling wines, there are two main types and a bunch of sub-branches like pet nats. First, you have Champagne Method, or the method traditional. That's when the wines are fermented, bottled, and then a second fermentation takes place in the bottle. That's what creates the carbon dioxide in the wine. The wines then go through a process known as disgorgement, where they take off the top, take out some of the dead leaves, the dead sediment, uh, put a little bit of residual sugar or sweetener if needed, and then cap them. This is the method that winemakers all over the world try to copy because we all love champagne. On the other side, you have the Charmat method method. What happens is all the wine goes into a big stainless steel tank and then the sugar, the yeast is added and the secondary fermentation happens inside a big pressurized tank. Then those wines are put out, they're filtered and bottled. That's what happens in Prosecco, M Moscato di Asti, and a variety of inexpensive sparklers around the world because it's less labor intensive and it's a little bit cheaper when it comes to scale. This third type of special sparkler is what we have here, Pet Nat, or Petalet Natural, also known as the Method Ancestral. And what happens is you take the wine and before it's done fermenting, people bottle it. Then when fermentation finishes, you get a nice little spritz, some nice little bubbles in the bottle. You know, this method was developed in Lemoux in the south of France where I've been before. Actually, that was the first method classical sparking area too, even before Champagne. But the French producers that really made it famous were from the Loire, especially amongst natural or minimal intervention producers, and then that started to go all over the world. You know, it's so funny. I'd been in wine for a long time. I'd been a wine enthusiast for many, many years, but I'd never heard of pet gnats until I went to Georgia. Not the state in the U.S., Georgia in the Caucasus region. They've become the darling of all hipster wine bars over the last few years because usually they're low in alcohol, they're crisp, fruity, they're uncomplicated, and they're refreshing. They're usually bottled with these crown caps that you see in beer a lot of time, so it's easy. You just take a wine key, psh, pop them off, you're ready to go. You know, I have to say, I'm not the hugest fan of pet knots because a lot of times when you open them, up to a third of them just squirt out of the bottle, you lose about a third of the wine. I know they're fritzy, they're easy to drink, but when I want sparkling wine, I want something that's a little bit more complex or I want bubbles to be a little bit finer. Uh, but there are some good, I have tasted some excellent ones out there. I think some of my favorite pet knots are ones that are actually disgorged. Therefore, when I open those, I know that they're not going to explode all over the place. But in the natural wine world, the minimal intervention wine world, a lot of producers do not disgorge. They leave all the sediment in the bottle. So these things can be cloudy, funky, and fresh. So I've got a couple here from this producer in eastern Slovenia called Kobal. Uh, first one I have here, they're both under the Batia label. This is a Rumini Muscat, which is yellow Muscat, 2020. So it's a brand new, freshly bottled vintage. And this one right here, it's a little bit of a rosé pet nat, vintage 2020. This is Modra Franquinha, which is also known as Blau Frankish. You know, a lot of the Method Ancestrals that you have in Lemoo, they're very nicely made, but they're a little bit off dry, a little bit too sweet for my tastes. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see how these are going to taste, but before I open them, I got to get something. Ah, I got to get this bucket right here because I'm scared of, if I open this, that these will explode all over the place, so I have to be prepared. Let's hope that that doesn't happen. I gotta move everything aside because you never know if <laughs> things explode. I remember one time I was with a minimal intervention in Slovakia before and he was opening some of his new pet nats and it was just spraying all over the place. <laughs> he was trying to give it a taste and then by the time he set the bottle on the table, there was only about half the bottle <laughs> left. I hope that doesn't happen here because I don't want it to spray all over all of this equipment. So please, Please, please do not explode. Actually, it might be good for the video because it might go viral or something. But please do not explode. Okay, we already have a winner because this didn't blow up all over the place. Thank goodness. I'll put that to a side, but I gotta keep it there just in case. So, Rumini Muscat, also known as a yellow Muscat. A lot of people think of them as simple, flowery, fruity wines, but they can make some really, really nice stuff. I've had some beautiful uh, yellow Muscat sparklers 
out of uh, Colle Eugeni in Italy. I think I pronounced that right in the Veneto. I've had some beautiful ones. I think they have a specific mutation, specific strain of yellow muscat. But anyway, Rumini Muscat from Slovenia in a pet nap. Let's give this a smell. It's flowery, but not too explosive. It's actually, you know, well, it's actually pretty pleasant. I think dandelions, lilacs, yellow peach. That's exactly what this smells like. Nothing more. It really smells like putting your putting your nose in some lilacs, maybe with some yellow peach accent on it. Let's give this a, a taste, shall we? First off, this is bone dry. Bone dry, no sweetness here. Maybe even a little bit of bitterness to it. This has a little bit more complexity than I was expecting. Uh, actually, want you know? Actually, I want a li even a little bit more fruit. This is a this definitely finishes with a dry, bitter sensation, with not as much sweetness or a little fruit. I wouldn't even mind a little bit of sweetness here. That being said, it's not funky at all. It's very well made. It's very clean. Very delicious. Bubbles are fine here. Gives a lot. I give a I give Cobal a lot of props because it didn't explode all over the place. Not bad. Not bad at all. I think for somebody that likes, that maybe wants a Moscato di Asti type of flavor, but doesn't want too much sweetness, might enjoy something like this. Good job. I, good job, Cobalt, on that first one. I gotta get the pan out again because I'm opening the second one. I don't want to explode. Next up, like I said, we have the Modra Franquinha, also known as Blau Frankish. You know, this grape uh, is a kind of a much maligned grape coming from Central Eastern Europe, you know, there's evidence that it might be Slovenian. There's actually more plantings in Hungary where it's called Kek Frankosh, but the Austrians are pushing really hard with their Blau Frankish. And you know what? Uh, where, where I spend a lot of time in Central Eastern Europe, it's actually a really difficult sell, and I don't know why. I think it's a wonderful grape. It makes delicious rosés and very good juicy red wines. So, I gotta prepare myself in case this explodes all over the place again. Let's hope it doesn't here. All right, Cobal goes two for two in my book. Oh, send a bubble up again. Is it gonna explode? No, 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 good. Because <laughs> the wines didn't explode. Let's give this a go here. So there is some sediment in the bottom of both of these wines. Uh, gonna be These are gonna be great in hipster bars. Let's give this a smell. I like the beta bubbles. It looks a little more frothier. Strawberries, pure strawberries. If you like those leaner, high, high acidity rosés, you're gonna dig this. Really smells like strawberries, watermelon, water, like a watermelon jelly rancher. Maybe a little bit of that strawberry creamsicle, just all fruit, all fun. Let's give it a go. <laughs> this has the same kind of bubbles as some of those like craft sodas I had when I was a kid. There was a company called Jones Soda in the US. That's what this reminds me of. It's a dry wine, but there's just a touch of sweetness that brings out that strawberry, that watermelon fruit. I actually find this really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. Watermelon, strawberries, bubbles. That's all it is. I was expecting to poo-poo all over these wines because usually I don't like pet knots, but these are good. Not the most complex wines in the world, but fun, easy to drink. You serve them chilled, and they're bubbles. Who doesn't like bubbles? This was actually great today because it gives me new hope for pet knots. Actually, I was going on an anti-pet knot tirade for the last year because I hadn't come across any good ones. I opened plenty of them, and they just exploded all over the place. So I guess you can teach an old dog new tricks. So I'd like to know, do you like pet knots? Do you have any favorite producers, any regions? Drop it in the comments below, and I'll see you guys soon. Hello, thanks for watching. Hey, you made it to the end. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell so you know when new videos are out. If you like content like this, check out our Patreon page where you get some behind the scenes exclusive content. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Cheers.